I have started a few years ago as a middleware, middleware consultant where I worked mostly with the SOAP and REST API, Linux servers, servers and this stuff on um, on-premise messaging architecture where um, basically DevOps were still coming to the company world. So I was mostly um, a, a passionate about the DevOps um, as a, from a personal point of view more than a professional point of view. Uh, but I was already reading books like uh, The Phoenix Project by Jen uh, Kim or Continuous Delivery or these books about uh, the, new, the, new, the new methodology. Um, I always try to apply this concept in my work, uh, but uh, the Agile approach was still not there actually. So I switched um, a, few, a few times jobs in the, in the last years to, to try to uh, to get to my um, to my dream job, which is the, the DevOps world, uh, where uh, I found myself uh, right now. Being, being so passionate about these topics uh, were really the um, the main drive for me, and um, I uh, ended up uh, being uh, the the first one in my company, with, together with a senior architect, to deploy. Uh, the first web application server in a big uh, automotive corporation on Kubernetes. And my obstacles uh, were mainly related to be um, an, er an early adopter of the Kubernetes world. So I really struggled to find the documentation and uh, guides, articles, since uh, there were just uh, in introductions about this topic. I'm not referring to early adopters of Kubernetes in general, but in my company. So, for, oh, for, for yeah, for us, six years ago, between six and seven years ago, uh, Kubernetes just came in the in this uh, in this company, and for the in the first projects, there were very very few people able to to work with that. So we we had um, we hadn't any knowledge uh, to sh to share or to talk about. We are we're just testing ourselves how to do the stuff. Well, uh, <laughs> I tried to do that, but it was a really a big corporation. So uh, in a very specific project, um, there was this uh, interesting um, Kubernetes adoption. And I pushed a lot my management to be there. And uh, I was lucky enough to, to be moved in this project and to, to, to try to, put, to, to publish our first web application server there. That was actually before I was uh, really uh, learning um, in a structured way DevOps. That was really more uh, fix it and, and publish it as fast, as fast as you can because it was um, a consultancy uh, project. So we really didn't have much time to understand deeper uh, the stuff we should really deliver uh, as fast as possible since uh, there was a lot of stuff to, to fix that, uh, but it was also very, very uh, interesting to discover all that stuff together with uh, my colleague. And may, I think there is where I first uh, started my love with Kubernetes, let's say. Okay, um, today I think that uh, I try to be helpful in my company being in the central DevOps team where we actually manage the platform for all the development teams. So we are, let's say, the team that um, um, delivers new policies, new standard, new templates, where all the, devel the developers can uh, leverage their stuff to, uh, let's say, um, be able to deploy it uh, without knowing everything about DevOps. So we like as uh, a service for our teams where we can help them to, to push to push the, the applications to the cluster as fast as possible. In, in detail, I work on Golang tests for our Terraform plans, or I work a lot on Docker files, or container files, as uh, we should say today, and where maybe I try to make them uh, lighter and safer, checking uh, CDs and security stuff like that, or either uh, on the cloud architecture where we have to, to work on the networking stuff and, and so on. 
Yeah, uh, we are more or less eight to 10 people uh, for the central DevOps group. And it depends on the shift we have because we try to have um, people from the development group, from the development group in our group, uh, uh, going um, for maybe one week, one to two weeks to share the knowledge and to, to make them see how we work, why we do stuff, and to let them to, um, understand the, the platform code we have in place. So um, to help them, we have a, a lot of templates already prepared that they can just extend from, with, the, with the, them pipelines and to be able to, um, let's say, know the less as possible about the platform to just uh, write a container file and a, a pipeline to, to be able to be in production uh, in a few hours. To really answer your question, I should mention that I was always convinced that learning is mm, fundamental for our work because you, uh, at a certain point in your career you have to, to choose a path, I, I think. From one path there is just uh, fix it quick and dirty and go on with the, next task, with, with the next task, which is totally okay, but it's one kind of job. And another path, if you are maybe more passionate about it, uh, it's to really understand what you are doing. So to fix it fast, okay, because that's what you have to do in the company, but also maybe to stop it whenever you can to un really understand, go deeper inside that issue to try to understand how to not uh, how to not make it happen again. So uh, to answer your question, I always um, learn by doing, but also I always try to find some time in the early in the morning or in the evening, sometimes in the weekend when I didn't have personal activities. To, to go deeper, to go to GitHub, to clone repos, to do experiments, to learn from uh, technical articles. I was always uh, subscribed to different uh, mailing lists, forum channels on, uh, on Slack or other uh, Reddit on uh, other places uh, where you can find public information from different kind of people. So uh, I came from a, uh, let's say a very different uh, sources for of learning, and uh, finally I found uh, Code Cloud. Uh, just you know, going around in the internet, and um, it 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 uh, give give me uh, immediately a good impression because it seems that finally the people that were talking were not just teachers uh, reading uh, uh, prepared stuff that they didn't understand, but it, it was a um, a good mix of, of knowledge and uh, teaching. So they were able to explain in English what, what we're doing, but they were actually doing uh, real stuff that worked. So when you had the workshop in, uh, in the courses, I, I like very much that, uh, that that testing environment actually works and you can do real stuff there and uh, to, to see if, if, um, if you can do more experiments to understand better the, the topic. Okay, uh, one thing is hard to choose, but uh, I'd say that in this job where stuff changes every day, being too theoretical could be very fastly, um, let's say, outdated. So maybe the practical part is the best part for me, uh, especially when you have uh, contexts or workshops or special labs that uh, add some complexity, complexity and you have to to really challenge yourself to, to solve that uh, those uh, exercises. Actually, I have already uh, suggested CodeCloud to our uh, company. Indeed, uh, uh, the first time I, just, I came to this company, I asked my management to, if it would be possible to have a learning platform like this one. Uh, to be uh, at, this, um, at our disposition for the DevOps team and uh, the management was very understanding and open-minded to, to have a look to, do, to that. Also leveraging the offers you were giving on the platform for the uh, pro subscription. Uh, so we were happy to, to subscribe and to have some license for our uh, DevOps team. So I think CodeCloud is 
it's giving also to junior people more uh, a more broad understanding since it, it's not about a single thing but you can see together helm golang uh, kubernetes uh, so you can have a 30, 30 160 degree of the of the devops world and to really start understanding it, why all these pieces how all these pieces fit together Well, uh, right now I'm very passionate about Golang. I already finished the course on the platform and I hope there will be more about that because uh, I, well, basically everything right now around Kubernetes is on, in Go. So every plugin, every dashboard, every metric server you build is in Golang. And I'd like to be able to easily extend some, some stuff like that uh, to be able to customize for my company needs. So this is something I'm really looking into right now.